For a lot of us, when we started playing guitar, we wanted to sound like somebody. Our guitar hero, or a song we heard on the radio, or someone who inspired us to play. But for a lot of us, after we've been playing a while, we're tired of sounding like everybody else. We want to develop a sound that is our own, a very unique tone that fits our personality and says who we are. We associate particular sounds with certain brands. Uh, the Gibson sound of the PAF humbucking pickups, the Fender sound of the Strat single coils, uh, the PRS sound of the 5815s. But within all of these major brands, there are some outlier guitars that really produce a different tone that might be just what you're looking for if you're trying to develop your own unique sound. So today we're going to take a look to see if we can discover any treasures on the island of misfit guitars. We're all misfits! And before y'all start sending me hate mail about what I said, these are not misfit guitars I'm going to be showing off, but they are different. They are guitars that are, they stand out in their brand because of their sonic differences. And we're gonna take a look at a few, and I'm gonna do this a little bit differently, just as an experiment. Rather than as we usually do on guitar demos, you know, pulling out a guitar, dialing in the amp for this sound, I wanna take a look at these. What would it be like if you just brought one of these guitars in, plugged it into your existing rig? You've, you've already got an amp that I'm sure you love, a pedal board set up that you're happy with, so let's just take a look at a couple of sounds here that I use when I'm gigging and what happens when I bring these new guitars in and just insert them into the mix. How different do they sound? Let's see what we find out. I've got a Les Paul, beautiful Les Paul uh, classic here. And uh, one of the sounds that I use for uh, my heavier, more modern rock kind of sounds it's, uh, I'm going to be playing through my Helix today. This is a model of the um, Bogner Ubershaw. This is the sound that I use for most of my humbucking guitars whenever I want to get heavy with them. Okay, so that's where I'm starting at here. And with both of these sounds that I'm going to demonstrate, I also have a clean boost that I use just to drive the front end of the model a little bit harder. Okay, so that's the starting point for my heavier sound. The second amp setting I'll use is what I use for, you know, cleaner, single coil rhythm, funk sounds. With a boost on it. That's enough of that. But you get the idea anyway. Now we're gonna take a look at some of these other guitars through these two amp sounds. Okay, the first of these outlier guitars I wanted to take a look at is the Gretsch Streamliner G2622. It has a new type of pickups that Gretsch has just come out with called Fidelisonic 90s. Now, construction-wise, they're based on P90s, but they're very, very different, and they've got some unique qualities. So uh, let's take a listen to this really quickly. I'm going to start with the bridge pickup here, and I'm playing through that clean sound that you heard on the Stratocaster, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Okay, the first thing you'll notice is that for a P90, 
it's got a lot more oomph in the lows than you would normally expect. It's got a lot more output too. I mean, it's really hitting the front end of this model hard. And this is the uh, Line 6's model of the Fender Princeton. And this guitar is driving it to that point. I'm going to engage the boost and see what we get there. I mean, we're... We're almost getting into like blues breaker territory with this. That is pretty cool. That's why I wanted you to check out these pickups. Um, they're just not another flavor of P90s. There's something very different about them. Let's hear what this does on the neck pickup. Um, this is with the boost back off on this clean model. I mean, really, this is, this is early clapping sounding stuff through a Fender Princeton model. This is cool. All right. Well, let's see what it does with the higher gain sound. Okay, right off the bat, that surprised me a little bit. This is definitely up more toward toward what we were getting out of the humbuckers, but I'm not hearing a whole lot of noise, and these are single coils. They're constructed like P90s, but. Very interesting mid-range frequencies that are being boosted there, but still, still a lot of articulation and sparkle on the highs. That's not what I expected this to sound like through a high gain amp. Let's see what it does with the neck pickup. Okay, this threw an Uber shawl, a P90 base neck pickup, and I mean, there is not a tad bit of mud in this. And even in more tightly voiced chords, it's still not, it's not turning into mud. Very interesting. So this is definitely something that I would encourage you to check out. And also, the prices on the Gretsch guitars right now. You can get this Gretsch Streamliner with the Fidelisonic 90s under $500. So check this out, definitely. And the next of our outlier guitars I'd like to take a look at is the PRS SE Starla. Uh, PRS is pretty known for their 8515, 5815 variety, based on PAF. Uh, they're a modern voiced humbucker, tight low end, a little bit extended highs from what you hear on the vintage pickups. But the DS02 pickups in the Starla are a very different variety. These, well, I'll let you see what, I'm gonna play them first. 
and then see what you think. I'm going to go in my clean sound first here and run through the pickups. These have split coils as well, so we're going to take a listen to the split sounds also. <laughs> Neck pickup. And now to split coil in the neck pickup. Okay, and the bridge split. Interesting. Let's see what these do on the uh, higher gain sound. Back to the bridge here. Yeah, that's I just this growl to them that I really like on the high gain without feeling oversaturated. Um, quickly go to the neck pickup here. Okay, let's go to coil split on the neck. Still very dark sounding. Okay, let's check out the bridge pickup on this. That nice growl is back there with these. Full humbucker here. Coral split. That is just a great vintage rock tone that kind of took this Ubershaw model down into the Marshall Plexi range. Very nice. Another outlier that's got a very different sound than you'd expect from a PRS. Next, let's take a listen to Fender's Noventa Telecaster. Uh, the pickup in this, again, looks much like a P90 design, but again, I think it'll surprise you a little bit. You may have already heard the Noventa in some other demos. Uh, there's a lot of buzz about this guitar, and I think you'll see why.
is just a great sound. That's with my the clean setting that we started out here. It's pushing the front end just a little bit, and boy. I mean, that's it's kind of like a Telecaster bridge pickup that gained a lot of weight. For any country player who thought he could never get what he wanted out of a pickup that looked like this, that is a killer, that is a killer sound. On this one I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put the boost pedal in front of this one. Wow, this just makes you want to dig in. And it gives you back everything you put into it in spades. That is super nice. Now, I want to check it out with the, uh, with the high gain tone here and see what it does here. Put a little bit of boost on this too. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. The Fender Noventa. This is definitely something that you should check out if you're looking for a unique tone. Okay, next up is one that is close to my heart because I own one of these from 1969. And I am so grateful to Gibson for bringing back the Les Paul Deluxe the guitar that nobody wanted back in 1969 because it had many humbuckers on it. After playing in so many bands where the other guitarist had a full-sized humbucker guitar, they would ask me, what are those pickups? You always stand out. You always cut through the mix. And that's what these mini humbuckers do. Very different sounding pickup for Gibson. A handful of classic players from back in that time period used them. Pete Townsend, probably the most notable one. Neil Young put a mini humbucker to replace a full-sized humbucker in one of his Les Pauls. Um, Scott Gorm from Thin Lizzy. That's about it. Because although they're the same size as a Firebird pickup, Totally different animals, totally different sound. So let's check this out. I won't talk about it anymore. Uh, this is on the clean setting here and on the bridge pickup. <laughs> These are, have very low number of turns on them. I think about 
4,000 turns compared to around 8,500 for a full-sized humbucker. So they are lower output, but the size of the magnetic field is so much smaller, they pick up only a, a, a much smaller area of the string vibrations than a full-size humbucker does. So the sound remains very focused. I mean, of all the pickups that we've tried out, on this clean sound, this is really the only one that I can step back and use and play funk style guitar. It doesn't break the amp up. Okay, I do love it. Let's go to the neck pickup on here. Yep, just getting away from the bridge, we focus that narrower field on a very rich area of string vibrations where that second node would be the second octave. Okay, little bit of boost on here. That is just a killer blues sound. Um, like I say, I do have experience with these pickups, but I just, I love them. Now, even more interesting, perhaps, is what they do on a higher gain setting. I'm going to go back to the Uber Shaw model here. And back to the bridge pickup. I mean, there is, it's taken this back to almost breakup stage when every other pickup had it in full out distortion. Okay, a boost on that. Okay, let's check out what the neck pickup does in this higher gain setting here. Wow, that is... To be able to get that kind of singing sustain without being overwhelmed with distortion, still keeping the clarity of the sound, uh, definitely check this out as a possibility for developing a unique tone. And here we have, from the psychedelically enhanced minds of Fender's Parallel Universe team, the new Maverick Dorado. Uh, and obviously, you know, uh, that was a joke, but this is really a standout Fender guitar. The pickups on here, although they look like TV Jones Filtertrons, and I think they've got some of that heritage in them. These are a new Tim Shaw design uh, with Filtertron covers on them. And just as an added bonus, you know, if, with this headstock up here, if a hockey game ever breaks out, 
you're ready to go. But the tones are what we want to talk about here. Yes, it's hard to get over the unique look of this guitar. And this, you know, if you're looking for something to, you know, make yourself stand out, this will definitely do it on stage just because it is a very different looking guitar. And I mean that in a good way. I really do like the design of this overall. But we're talking about tones here. So let's take a listen. And I'm back on my clean sound here. And this is gonna be the bridge pickup by itself. That is just really, really nice. Uh, as you can hear, it's not overdriving this model at all. And the tone is, it's more Rickenbacker-like to me. I mean, I, I wanna do. I wanna do Tom Petty or some, you know, jangly alt rock kind of stuff on here. Uh, that's just as a cool feel to have kind of the Rickenbacker attack, but with a full, rich sustain to it. That's... Very nice. Okay, uh, the bridge pickup on this. I really like that. Uh, okay, let's put a little bit of boost on it and see what we get on this clean channel. I'm gonna go back to the bridge pickup here. Okay, that's a very interesting tone too. Okay, and the neck pickup with a little boost on it. Okay, let's see how this holds up with the high gain sound. Back to the bridge. That is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to hit the boost on this and see what we get. Very nice, too. Um, again, it, that low output sound that kind of fooled me on the clean channel now seems to be hitting this hard and really giving some drive to it. I mean, the boost is helping, but even without the boost. Very cool. 
and let's take a listen to the dirty channel with the neck pickup. <laughs> Wow, very interesting pickups to see on a Fender. Well, there you have it. Some of the outliers from different brands that we have in stock right now, all interesting. And one thing I do want to point out, since I'm trying to show a few guitars that are some options that might be overlooked by players at times, just because that they have a unique or maybe you would even say a quirky sound to some of them, these are, there's nothing that's an outlier about the way they play, the way they're constructed. These all have neck carves that are very familiar to these brands. Um, the materials they're made out of, the differences in the electronics and the aesthetics on most of these guitars. But they definitely give you a wide range of options. And I also do hope it helped that I kind of played these through rigs that I use with particular guitars because that's you know, I'm sure that that's the way your setup is as well. Um, so I just hope this helped and give you a few things to think about and a few options to help you develop your unique sound. And for more help in this department, give the guys here at moreguitars.com a call. They are the experts on every brand and every piece of gear that they sell here. Pedals, amplifiers, guitars, even strings that can guide you in the direction to really develop a personal and unique sound to your playing. And they would love to help you out. So give them a call. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. If you've got any questions about anything, leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. <laughs>